Okay. So, hi everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, this is a bit of an impromptu video. Uh, a number of my students asked me to teach spoon bending again. So I'm doing it this Sunday at the Lotus and Light Metaphysical Chapel um, in Manassas. So I have not practiced spoon bending in a couple of weeks. So I was like, okay, I should practice. I'm like, oh, well, if I'm practicing, let's do it online. Have some nice added pressure for me. So, okay. Yep. Bent a little too soon. Hi, Alexandra. Okay. Okay, I'm going to take a moment. It's going to be boring for a second because I'm just going to sort of get myself attuned here. We'll get a little more fun. Oh, got a little bend in here. Um, I think I look a little tired tonight because I got up at four o'clock to uh, catch an airplane flight. And this is the third time this week that I was up at four to uh, catch an airplane flight. So um, this is actually really grounding for me. Um, and by the way, anyone can do this, not just me. Like. Uh, I put a link to my online school. I have a, a free spoon bending program with tons of spoon bending classes that you can take for free because I don't do this for the money. This is like just fun, you know. It's about uh, learning that we're in charge of our reality. We can define our reality to be however we wish it to be. So I'm gonna show you guys uh, some of you have seen this before. This is the first spoon I ever bent. And this is like, <laughs> this is a solid, solid spoon. I'd had it a number of years. You see, I also got the bowl kind of misshaped a bit. Um, this is the kind of thing I'm doing now. I'm tying a couple of pieces of silverware into uh, little pretzels together. Um, like this one, these two forks. I like this. and. See, I kind of cross-hatched the, uh, the tines there. Um, and here's one that I did um, the other couple weeks ago. See, I kind of wove these tines together and um, spun that around. All right, so I'm going to push my sleeves up. Uh, some guy was uh, trolling my YouTube channel claiming that I'm like, he kept saying I'm using liquid metal. I don't even know what that is. I'm like, oh, please. Like, those of you who know me know that spoon bending is like the most normal thing I do. All right, I'm gonna start with a fresh spoon. All right, so I'm going to do here. What I'm gonna do is just so if you guys have a spoon you can uh or a fork even if it's plastic you can do plastic too uh feel welcome to grab one and go along with me so this is one of my favorite basic techniques i open up my crown chakra and i invite the energy to flow and i open my root chakra so the energy is flowing through me and i don't worry about any blocks in my body because the energy is flowing. It's flowing. This isn't about me and any personal issues I have. This is about energy flowing like a wind tunnel or a waterfall, you know. And I, as once I feel like everything's flowing and I'm open, and if I have any pain or pressure anywhere, I give it permission to release. So it's just all flowing. I imagine that the energy flowing through me is indeed liquid metal like molten you know steel or um uh 
what is it, mercury? I mean, I know mercury is toxic, but you know, imagining energy mercury with my imagination and it's flowing through me and pooling around me. So I become like this metal living statue goddess in a pool of mercury and flowing, you know, and um, if I feel like I need to flow more with more intensity, I'll heat the whole thing up so it can even be boiling and, you know, red hot. Um, and I'll connect with the spoon and I'll say, you are one with me. I am liquid metal. You are liquid metal. And... We are soft, yielding, liquid. Well, <laughs> I got it that far. <laughs> I'm definitely like nothing like catching the early morning flight. <laughs> but hold on, I'm going to get back into it. I'm going to get back into it. All right, you're a soft, yielding, liquid. Metal. Now, that's how far I'm getting. So I promise you guys who are joining me Sunday for class in Manassas, I'll be in much better form then. Um, and we'll do things like um, my big old clatter of jewelry here. I'm not doing so this is a serving spoon as opposed to the teaspoon it's bigger and thicker i have a bunch of these as well so we can really have some fun challenges do tight little corkscrews um so i'm going to play with spoon bending but i'm going to distract myself a little bit and anyone who wants i'll teach you how to like pretzel it all together into little art form knots you know I think this will be like my coat of arms <laughs> if, if I ever become a titled person. My coat of arms will be mangled silverware on a shield. Um, so, and again, plastic works great because if you're not in the flow, it just snaps. But when you're in the flow, you know, I did this like years ago and it's still holding its shape. Okay, so while I am <laughs> um, Alexandra, thank you for your question about understanding more deeply. Um, the purpose of spoon bending is not to bend spoons. It is the bent spoon is the product. The purpose is to hone your manifestation skills. Um, so for those of you who do energy healing, um, you know, you get a client, they're on the table and you're like going around and you're like, energy is flowing and you're doing stuff and they're silent on the table. And, you know, you think like, oh, I hope that they're experiencing something because I'm experiencing something. And then afterwards, when you have your shares, you learn, you know, how meaningful it all was. When you do things like spoon bending, small object levitation, when you work on physical telekinesis skills, you feel the energy flowing through you and you see the effect it has. So then when you later go and work with your client, when you feel the energy flowing through you, you know the effect it has. And if you find when the energy is flowing through you a certain way and it's really impactful, and another time an energy is flowing through you another way and it's very subtle, then you, you know these techniques to use for specific purposes. So it's really a technical skill development process. Now, for those of you who are not energy healers, but you think it's really cool and fun to do, yeah, of course, do it. I mean, you know, it's really fun when you're at a party and people goes, bend a spoon, and you grab like a spoon and give it to someone, like suddenly you're like the coolest person at the party. Um, let's see, but the other thing is the spoon, you know, like 
I'm a retired chef. So I spent my, you know, like 40 years working in kitchens. For 40 years, I'm like using silverware. And now I'll take some of this silverware that I've owned for decades that I've used commercially, like literally thousands of people over time would have like, over some of it, you know, like a hundred thousand people would have eaten off this and it's still like strong and sturdy. Well, not this one, but you know, so. and then I'm like, well, I'm never going to use this again as a chef and I've got a whole drawer full of them. So I start bending them when I can get them to melt. And, you know, I use my hands. There are like people who are more masterful than me who can just like hold it there and it will go. Ooh. Yeah. Um, maybe if I, took time for myself to actually meditate and become calm, I could do that, but uh, that's not where my life is at right now. So I'm happy with using my fingers, but it's not, it's not like, you know, I'm not putting much pressure on it. So when you decide you want to do something like bend a spoon, what you're doing is acknowledging I'm the one who defines my reality. I decide that something can happen and it happens. So then when you go and you manifest the rest of your life, I want to have a great vacation. I want to have a job promotion. I want to have a wonderful group of friends. I want to find my perfect spouse. By learning something like spoon bending, you're developing the skills within you that allow you to go forward and manifest the life you want. So again, spoon bending, super fun. Let's do it one more time. Okay, if any of you have a spoon, you know, feel welcome to grab it. Uh, we're gonna do quantum spoon bending. This is fun. So um, in quantum spoon bending, you allow time to go backwards. So uh, the most common way is to imagine time is like a circle and you speed it up faster and faster. So, you have this spoon, but once upon a time, the spoon was not a spoon. Nothing is as it was, and nothing will be as it is. There was a time when this spoon was metal ore in the ground. Then it was dug up, transported, cleansed, put in a big vat along with a bunch of other ore, and boiled up together so that all the impurities could rise to the top and be released. And the metal itself became very pure and hot and boiling, red boiling liquid metal. that was then poured into these spoon molds where at first it's liquid metal and then it cools and cools, still too hot to touch. And then it cools, but it's malleable and then it cools until it's solid and at the appropriate temperature and they release it and package it and send it out. So I'm going to, again, my energy is flowing through me. My energy is fully flowing and it's flowing through my arms. So I'm energizing the spoon with my hands. I'm going to invite the spoon to go back, back in time to when it was first poured into its mold it was so hot and liquid. It wasn't quite so tense and tough as it is now. It was liquidy. It was malleable. I imagined time like a circle, like a carousel or a merry-go-round, and I speed it up, speed it up, speed it up, faster, faster, and then There we go, bam. So for me, actually, the biggest issue with spoon bending is my hands get hot and then they get sweaty, so the spoon keeps slipping. So the majority of tension you see on me is me just trying not to lose my grip on the spoon, but it's actually super warm right now. Like, it's about 120 degrees, 130 degrees, somewhere in there. Um, <laughs> that's a chef thing, touching things to your, your lip to see what the temperature is. I know it's weird, but there you go. Um, so 
anyone who wants to join me Sunday in Manassas, we're doing a, oh, now it's solid. Like now I can't, <laughs> now it's like, it's back to solid. I, I would have to put a lot of effort and even then I wouldn't be able to bend it well. Um, and if you want to learn spoon bending, but you don't want to join me in Manassas, uh, go to the link here to my online videos. There's a whole bunch there. And, um, you know, it's, I don't know, I love it. But to me, this is so much fun. I love saying reality. I'm the one in charge. Do I have any other fun ones here? Oh, this one's fun. <laughs> I, I made this one, I think, yeah, I messed with it. I was thinking of making like modern sculpture. I saw this artist who did spoon bending and he would bend them together to make actual tiny human sculptures and it was really cool. Um, so I'm going to jump off the phone in a moment, but I mean <laughs> the phone. <laughs> I need to get to sleep early tonight. I'm going to jump off in a moment, but uh, before I do, I've been meaning to catch up with you guys who were like so supportive and friendly the last time I live streamed when I talked about um, how, uh, you know, I had had some personal traumas, a friend who kind of showed a side of her that was not you know, it was a little heartbreaking to see her choose to go down a dark path instead of, you know, letting her friends and family support her. Um, and I've been going up into, I went up to the, um, in meditation, I went to the Galactic Collective and I, I was saying, you know, what can I do? What can I do about this for, like, for my healing uh, after, after this traumatic situation? And they immediately jetted me to the realm of the etheric surgeons, which was funny to me because I never thought about the etheric surgeons as having their own dimension, their own realm, but they totally do. And um, since then, I've gone up there a lot. And I've been studying with them. Uh, they have this entire educational, like a teaching hospital. Um, and it's really cool like now that you guys know about it get up there it's so awesome so um a lot of great healers not just from earth from other dimensions from all around have um are there and they they teach and they share amazing techniques so i'm going to tell you one of my favorite techniques and of course i'm kind of a plebeian there so you know it, it, it's not like i'm like some fantastic etheric surgeon right now i'm sort of junior level skill um one of my favorite is um you know the etheric surgeons like they're saying when you do energy healing you're sending energy from the outside in most of the time, not always, but most of the time, you know, you have energy on your hands and you're sending it in. But when you do etheric surgery, it's you're going inside and sending the energy out. Um, so the etheric surgeons often will send their energy like through the spinal cord or in through your crown chakra to your pineal gland. Depending on what they're operating on, they showed me um, for heart surgery, they'll go in through the eyeballs and go through the arteries, veins, whatever, that then go down to the heart from there. So they're looking for what external opening gets them into through like uh, our internal structure, veins, arteries, you know, skeletal structure, uh, digestive tract, Ox along with the oxygen, like uh, there are some things where you'll, you, they send like this golden energy through the top of your head into your crown down through your spine. And then they send golden energy in through your mouth and you breathe it in and it goes into your lungs and fills your lungs and from your lungs gets pumped the oxygen into your heart and mixes with all the blood and oxygen that your heart then pumps through your body. 
And from there, they ride along till they get to whatever organ they want to go to, and they fill it with this golden light, and they jump and they do the work that way. So I thought it was so interesting. It's like very much like a, a theroscopic surgery that doctors do, only with energy and golden light. And um, it's really amazing to watch. Um, I'm practicing the techniques and mixing it with my uh, prana shakti work that I do. So I'll um, bring in the prana shakti my invocation and I'll get into the punish which connects me with all frequencies of all dimensions so I'm like immediately a powerful conduit and then I will go to the um, etheric realm or the surgeons will come to where I am and they will teach me stuff but it's really powerful because the etheric surgery is supported with the the base of the prana shakti and um, and that's, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, so for spoon bending, uh, one thing I'm working on, jumping back, is this cool technique Uri Geller does. I have yet to master it, like a little bit, but not master, where he will like get his chi energy really powered up. He'll do like breath of fire and really get his chi going. And then it's amazing to watch. He will send all of his energy, like 100% of his energy to his thumb, and his thumb will be here in the in the spoon. And um, I saw him in a video do it with a big thick spoon. And he will actually burn through a little bump there so that the spoon goes boom, then down again, and then back up. So he'll like make the spoon have a little extra spoon <laughs> in it. Um, or he can burn his thumbprint into the spoon with this. So I'm working on that. I need to um, get my chi a little more powerful, but that's something I hope to show you all in the future. Okay, so this one is another one of my favorite because a lot of times the primary reason people have trouble, I love this one, with uh, spoon bending is lack of faith in self. They'll say, well, I believe that someone can bend the spoon. I believe that Bonita is bending the spoon. I just don't believe I can bend the spoon. And, um, you know, with all of these telekinesis skills, it comes down to 100% faith. So, um, like, I know, I have a friend who, <laughs> he doesn't even work anymore. Whenever he needs money, he does a meditation where he imagines that he's driving to the ATM and he deposits money into his checking account on the ATM and he gets his receipt and drives away and then he'll go online and check and the money that he imagined depositing has been deposited. And I asked him like, is this honest? Is this, and he said, no, the money doesn't come from anyone. Like he's not, we think that in order to receive money, you're getting it from someone, you're taking it from someone. But he said all he's doing is flipping numbers in a computer. So it does not have any, he's not stealing, he's not like doing anything. He's just literally giving himself found money. He is manifesting money for himself. Um, but he 100% believes that when he does this, the money will be there, and 100% it is. So I 100%. Oh, that's my cat, if you're wondering about the ghostly blur in the background. Um, so I 100% believe he can do it. But when I go to manifest the money, what happens is the amount of work I need to make that money will like immediately show up. So um, I don't have the same level of pure faith my friend has, but I have enough faith that, you know, whenever I need money, the money I need shows up but I work for it. <laughs> Luckily, I love my work. So, you know, that's a blessing. All right. So for this one, for people who don't have faith in self, what I do is like open yourself up always and be flowing. And, um, you know, I'm always saying work your energy structure, work your energy structure. 
um, you know, your inner grid, make sure your chakras are strong and connected. And so it makes such a difference. And so like I get my root chakra really deep and wide and I get my crown chakra really high up. I invite my guardian angel to come in through my crown chakra and come down and join me in my body. And I give my body completely to my guardian angel who of course I'm able to trust explicitly and totally. If there's one being I have full faith in, it's my guardian angel. So I'll invite my guardian angel to come through, take over my body, and I'll say, you bend this boon for me. Um, I may not have faith that I can do it, but I know my guardian angel can. So. Oh my God, so soft, so soft. <laughs> <laughs> there we go <laughs> good job good job angel now if you don't work with your guardian angel you can invite an ascended master you can invite someone you love who passed anyone you trust completely that you have faith in them invite them to come in take over your body and it gets so soft so um that's it for me tonight. I think I'm going to get to bed early tonight since it's, again, the third day this week. I was up at 4 a.m. to catch an airplane ride. Um, but do I have any other fun ones here? Yeah, you know, here's a soup spoon. Again, like the teaspoon. Here, you see the teaspoon. So the soup spoon, it's pretty thick. See, that's a pretty thick, solid spoon. Um, here's another one, soup spoon. Um, so I adore you guys. I think I'm going to go hit the hay. Um, and thank you all. Thank you. Wait, pipe bending while pipe is in use? Pipe bending. I'm not sure what that is. The only time I've ever done pipe work is when I've done like a uh, glass blowing. Um, but anything can be bent. Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys a quick story. Um, I'm gonna cut to the ending. I was with teaching a bunch of teenagers and once they realized uh, when we were doing spoon bending and they were like, oh my God, this is so easy. And you know how teenagers are. You're like, okay, we're going to bend a spoon. And they're like, oh, you mean like this? You know, they were amazing. They picked it up right away. When we got plastic spoons, they went, wow, it's so much easier. And they're like, oh, it's easier because we think it's easier, not because it's actually easier. It's all the same. Once I determine that I can bend the spoon or fork or knife or whatever, then I can bend it. It doesn't matter what it's made of. The next thing you know, they were like invading my commercial kitchen, trying to grab my big serving somewhere. And I'm like, no, 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 no. So we went out in the parking lot um, behind my old wellness center. There had been some construction work and there was some leftover piece of, links of rebar. So they picked up the rebar. One guy literally tied it into a, a bow knot. You know, like, because once they realized all they had to have was total belief, that's all they had to have. So um, there you go. Uh, you can bend anything once you have total belief. The reason we do the meditations is to help get us into that place of total belief. All right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, have a wonderful weekend. And... Uh, I hope to see some of you Sunday, or I hope to see some of you watch my online videos. If you bend this spoon, feel welcome to post a picture here on this uh, Facebook page. Uh, I would love to see your work in action. That makes me so happy. Okay, thank you. Bye.